Yeah, we rehearsed the fight scenes, but most of them were just me getting my ass kicked. <laughs> it never backed down. It was the sidekick, you know, the kind of guy who, he videotaped everything and I couldn't fight. So it was like, it was kind of this like wannabe kind of guy, uh, which felt like me. American Horror Story. When I first started American Horror Story, I had no idea what it was. A lot of the stuff in it, you know, in the pilot you find out that uh, Tate is a ghost. And in the series, you don't find out till episode four or five. I love the character. I mean, it's it, in the character description, it said you, you don't know if he's gonna kiss or kill you, which I was like, huh, that's kind of weird and interesting. And and the way it was written, I mean, there's, there's a line about uh, you know, Indian blood and like, you know, he, he, he was talking about the dream that he had and he's like, I like that. And the way I did that, I remember Ryan told me, you know, years later, he was like, because of the way you said that line, that's why you got the role. And I was like, oh, cool. <laughs> but I wasn't, I wasn't really thinking about that line. Probably season one was probably my favorite season because you don't, I mean, we like I said, we didn't know what it was. I didn't know it was gonna be an anthology series. I didn't know, I was gonna be playing a different role. I uh, I didn't know anything. I was just happy to have a job and happy to have a cool part, you know, being in a in a show that was, you know, intense and sort of, you know, flipped everything on its head, which was cool. So uh, I didn't know any of that stuff going into it. We do a lot of crazy stuff. I, I remember in season five when I was when I was Mr. March, I was sawing body parts off. And then the countess comes in and I'm like, darling, and this whole thing, and it was just it was one of those moments where I stepped outside of myself and looked at what I was actually doing and was kind of disgusted and horrified and was like, I've, I've become kind of desensitized to this stuff, which is really weird and, and, and kind of gross. So uh, it was one of those weird, surreal moments. How is the outside, darling? Tell me about one of your recent kills. I don't know how I developed the voice. I just kind of, uh, I was watching a lot of William Powell um, for like a 1930s voice. You and I are friends. And I feel a certain responsibility to you. And it sort of just kind of came from there, you know? Uh, and I just started messing around with it. And then once you hear it, then you start getting into it. And then, and then you get more scripts and more dialogue and you start to play around with that and see if it works and if it's weird or, or not. And uh, and it was just fun. I just love, I love playing that. I, I, obviously, I, my, my favorite is to work with Sarah because she's just so funny and so sweet. And, and um, you know, she, she's a great actress, but she can also turn it on and off. So she's very funny and, uh, and, and sweet in between takes and on set and stuff. So it's, it's fun to joke around with her. In Colt last year, I got to play a lot of crazy characters. Uh, Jim Jones, David Koresh, Do or do, we never quite figured it out. Uh, from Heaven's Gate, Jesus. Manson, that was the other one. Uh, yeah, I got to play Manson, that was really intense. I did a lot of research on those guys. Shooting that show is absolute insanity. We should have an American Horror Story season in space. It's, it would be cheap, because you could do it contained, you know, in the space station or ship or whatever it may be and then there's some kind of crazy creature or people will start to go insane and there's like you know you could do a lot of social commentary too it could be it could be fun it could be really good brian singer had seen me in an american horror story and you know called me up and and, and offered me the part of uh, quicksilver that was a dream come true you know i loved the x-men movies growing up and i was a big fan of uh brian's and 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 all the actors and characters in the X-Men movies. I mean, I was like, yes, immediately. I didn't, I hadn't even read anything or anything. He just kind of told me it was, I was really fast and that was it and uh, I was in. There's this one scene where my character runs around and um, <laughs> everybody's frozen and it's, uh, you know, it was basically just me with a green screen. I was just excited to get in there and do it. And then when they showed me what I was gonna be doing and uh, they showed me the, the previs, the sequence of it with time in a bottle and that song. I thought it was kind of hilarious and, and, uh, and just a really fun way to show the superpower. The cast is incredible. They're all, uh, you know, A-list actors. <laughs> so it was kind of, it was a, a dream come true working with them too. And Hugh Jackman is great. I, I remember we were shooting that scene uh, in my basement. He kind of, he does, he pulls his claws out and they're like these gross, 
<laughs> like they're not the, they're not the usual metal claws that I was used to seeing. Yeah, they're the bone claws, and they look kind of gnarly and gross. <laughs> and so I, I kind of went ugh in, in rehearsal. And Hugh was really cool, and he was like, "Yeah, yeah, do that, do that." And I was like, oh, "Okay, cool." So then I did it, and, and then it, it ended up in the movie, which was uh, which was cool. The Dark Phoenix is going to come out sometime. I think either end of this year or next year. It's a full-on drama. It feels like to me, you know, it's it's very like. The title says dark and uh, emotional, and, and it's about you know the inner struggle of, of Jean and, and and Phoenix. We would shoot it in the summer, so you go back in the summer of Montreal. It's it's kind of like summer camp, you know. You just go there and you see the gang again, and you're you're on set, and it's long hours, and you're in some sort of weird, you know, rubber suit. But everybody's hilarious, and I mean they're truly some of the funniest people I've ever met. Yeah, you just laugh your ass off. So it's it's really fun working on those films. So in American Animals, I play Warren Lipka, the fire, I guess, behind the uh, the operation. Warren's the, um, I don't know, he's kind of the like the trickster or like the shaman of the group. You know, he's this kind of crazy uh, guy who, who 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 gets off on on you know planning a meat heist. You know, where he steals meat that's left over from the restaurant that he works at. So it's like it's he's he's kind of this fun character that, that is just trying to uh, get the most out of life and to and to feel alive. Yeah, the film is based on true events. There, there's actually the real guys in the movie with us. So they intercut between the documentary and the narrative version. So it sounds weird, but it actually does work. And uh, he uses the documentary footage as sort of a uh, an anchor, really, to the truth of the story. So you're you're, you're watching this film and, and, you know, sometimes when you watch this is based on a true story, you end up questioning it and going, well, how much of this is, you know, Hollywood and, and is it really true? And when those moments happen, it cuts back to the real guys and you realize that it's coming straight from their mouths and, uh, and it all is really true and, and how it happened. So uh, it's, it's, it's an incredible story. It's an incredibly true story. Before we started shooting on American Animals, Bart, he sent us video footage what you see in the film, he sent us, and also sent us more than that, which sort of gave us an idea of who they were and where they came from and why they did it and sort of where they were at uh, when it all took place. But it wasn't enough for me, and, and I was furious that he, he, would, he didn't want us to talk to the real guys, which was so frustrating and annoying <laughs> because... Like that's the best part. Like he's right there. I can, I can, I can go to him. I can be like, hey, what happened here? And, and you know, it, it did happen ten years ago. So I understand where Bart was coming from in terms of not wanting us to have our performance shaped by them with their hindsight and trying to sort of maybe save face, you know. So I got it, but I also thought it would have been really fun to hang out with him. In Deadpool two, yeah, we did that cameo, and I thought it was going to be at the end for the credits, you know, something silly. So we all, it, there were some really uh, hilarious, uh, not PG versions of him opening that door and we're all in there doing some insane stuff. And it actually ended up being in, you know, kind of the first half of the movie, which is pretty cool. I, I, that's another dream of mine. I'd love to be a part of the Deadpool uh you know, movies. Uh, thanks for uh, sitting here listening to me yammer on about my characters. That was part one. Hopefully in five years I'm still working and we can see part two.